Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome to That's English. Hello. The Ducking Stool. That's the title of today's programme. Vanessa, what is a ducking stool? You'll find out later. You'll have to be patient. All right. Last time, Tom told us a story about his new girlfriend. Woman friend, please. Yes, sorry. Woman friend. So the topic is political correctness. Comportamiento políticamente correcto, es decir, no discriminatorio, lo cual significa evitar comportamientos sexistas, racistas, clasistas, etc. What do the British public think of political correctness? We ask people this question. Are you politically correct? No, I'm not politically correct. I try to be, but it's really hard. I mean, people get offended if you open doors for them, things like that. Sometimes it just gets silly. I'm not conscious of being politically correct. I think I'm politically correct. I would always talk about black people, not just blacks. I'd have to say, no, I'm not politically correct. I don't think I'm very politically correct, no. I think I tend to use things, words like crippled and cripple. <laughs> I never use politically correct language. I always say chairman, not chairperson. And I always say Mrs. or Miss, not Ms. So I'm not politically correct. Mrs. or Miss or Ms. What do you prefer to be called? Mm, well, why don't you call me Vanessa? All right. I think the concept of calling everybody Ms is ridiculous. I'm not married. I am a Miss. I, I'd like to be called a Miss. I don't like being called Ms Allen. I prefer to be called Miss Allen. I definitely prefer to be called Ms. Um, and I do think I'm politically correct. I think you have to be as a young person. So, that's one of the issues of political correctness. What title should you use for women? We've also heard that you should say black people, not blacks. What do people think about politically correct language? I think that politically correct language is actually a very good thing most of the time. I think that using chairperson and not chairman is a question of respect for women. And I think that people that don't like politically correct language have the problem. Well, silly, I think uh, this business of uh, the substitution of person, when you say, instead of saying a chairman or even a chairwoman, it's got to be a chairperson or even a chair. Uh, it seems to me that it's, um, it really is a bit of, bit of nonsense. Yeah. W words like mentally challenged, you know, I mean, you really have to think twice before you know what it means. Really. <laughs> mentally challenged, con un reto a su inteligencia. Tienes que pensar dos veces para saber lo que significa. It's one of those politically correct expressions. But what does it mean? It means unintelligent in plain English. There are lots of new politically correct expressions coming into the English language. We're going to hear now from a man who has written a book on this subject. Yes, and while you listen, see if you can spot the meaning of these politically correct expressions. Horizontally challenged. Con un reto horizontal. And financially disadvantaged. Económicamente poco aventajado. These are both politically correct expressions. What are the plain, old-fashioned, politically incorrect English words? So I have to say I'm very confused mm. about it all, but there is now a dictionary available 
that tells us how you can tell someone in the most correct terms that they are, what, horizontally challenged? Fat. Or financially disadvantaged? Broke. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, here's the man anyway, who's written that book. He's Nigel Rees. Hello. Good morning. Why Hi. did you write it? Ah, because I'm interested in language. And the thing about politically correct language is that it's watering the language down. It's replacing good old fa straightforward descriptive words and terms with rather vague ones. So why does it happen? Um, the reason behind the politically correct movement is that uh, we live in a plural society made up of many races. We are, we are all minorities of one sort or another. And the, the basic aim of political correctness, I think, is a good one. Uh, it is that we should think about how we talk to people and how we describe people. The trouble is that uh, introducing these new terms uh, not only waters down the language, um, well, some of them are plainly absurd, aren't they? That's Nigel? it. Uh, it's gone too far. Uh, and uh, some of these suggestions are balmy. And the thing is that you can never actually tell people to change the way they speak. Did you hear those expressions? Horizontally challenged is fat. And financially disadvantaged is broke, arruinado. No one really uses these words. You only hear them in jokes. Now, one of the most sensitive areas for political incorrectness is sexism, el sexismo. This is a very British problem, I think. Yes, it's time for... How to be British. Talking about women. Have you got your eye on anyone? What do you mean? I mean, do you fancy any of the girls? The girls? They're women. All right. Do you fancy any of the women? Look, can you talk more quietly? Why? I don't want my wife to hear you. Why not? She says that you're politically incorrect. That's ridiculous! Look at Sally. Oh, she's got fantastic legs. You're not allowed to talk like that in this house. You have to train hard to get legs like that. I won't let you talk like that. She's not an object, you know. She's got a good body, though. Stop it. Just stop it. But it's not just her body. She's intelligent as well. Mm -hmm. Look how she's running. She's sure to win a gold medal. <sighs> Yes, you're right. <laughs> She's a marvellous runner. Mm. Well, it's obviously not politically correct to talk about women like that. Fantastic legs, good body. And his friend thought that he was really sexist when he said, do you fancy any of the girls? ¿Te gusta alguna de las chicas? Do you fancy any of the girls? La palabra fancy significa gustar. Mike decía que le gustaba la chica como atleta y John creía que a Mike le gustaba como mujer. Ese fue el malentendido. Did you notice what John's wife thought of Mike? I don't want my wife to hear you. <laughs> Why not? <sighs> She says that you're politically incorrect. She says that you're politically incorrect. Notice that expression. She says that. It's an example of reported speech. Un ejemplo de estilo indirecto. Es decir, cuando alguien cuenta lo que otra persona ha dicho. El verbo que introduce el estilo indirecto suele ser say o tell. Y generalmente va en pasado. Veamos algunos ejemplos. What did John say? 
I don't want my wife to hear you. John said that he didn't want his wife to hear him. Fíjate en los cambios que se han producido. I don't want my wife to hear you. He said that he didn't want his wife to hear him. Here's another example. What did John tell Mike? You're not allowed to talk like that in this house. John told Mike that he was not allowed to talk like that. I'd like to watch the news now, Tony. What did Vanessa say? She said that she'd like to watch the news now. OK, fine. Let's watch the news. And let's find the answer to this question. What is a ducking stool? News, news. First, the headlines. Woman drowns in river. Our gracious queen may have the heart of a king. But first, tonight's main story. A man accused his wife of talking too much. In court today, she was sentenced to the ducking stool. Over to Sir Sidney Walsingham, who has the full story. Sir Sidney, what exactly happened today? <laughs> well, Trevor, the husband told the court that his wife talked all the time. His wife said that she didn't talk all the time. The husband then called his wife an old witch, and the judge sent her to the ducking stool. What exactly is the ducking stool? Well, Trevor, as you see in this picture here, it's a kind of chair which can be lowered into the water. If the woman sinks, then she's innocent. If she floats, then she is guilty of being a witch. And did the man's wife float? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not, Trevor. She drowned. <laughs> but everyone had a very good time here. People in the villages really seem to enjoy the ducking stool. It, it's like a public holiday. Back to you in the studio, Trevor. <laughs> A report out yesterday said that men are far superior to women, with the exception, of course, of our Queen Elizabeth. The Queen said today, I may have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king. That's all from That's English News. Good night. Did you see the ducking stool? It's that chair on a long pole, and it was used to lower women into the water. Horrible. Was the woman guilty, culpable, or innocent, inocente, of being a witch, de ser una bruja? If the woman sinks, then she's innocent. If she floats, then she is guilty of being a witch. And did the man's wife float? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not, Trevor. She drowned. If the woman sinks, then she's innocent. Si la mujer se hunde, es inocente. If she floats, then she is guilty of being a witch. Si flota, es culpable de ser bruja. She drowned. Se ahogó. So she was innocent. That's not very fair, is it? Very unfair. That's all we have time for. I hope you'll join us for our next programme. Goodbye. See you soon. Bye.